Please join me in the reading of the scripture. As Jesus and the disciples, together with a large cloud, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus around the, along the road. May God add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of these words. I'd like to invite the, the children to come forward for a message for all ages. Good morning, James. Good morning. How are you today? Are you tired or shy or both? Being a clown. Okay. Jason, not a clown. Okay. Sorry. I have a question for you, Jace. What? I have a question. Does anybody ever ask you to be quiet? No? <laughs> huh? Yeah. And he says with a big smile on his face. <laughs> I bet you sometimes, maybe once or twice, somebody has asked you to be quiet, huh? Yeah, from time to time. Right. Well, do you listen when they ask you to be quiet? Yeah, good boy. That's good. Well, the reason I'm asking you that is because today our story in our Bible is about a man named Bartimaeus. That's a big name, isn't it? Bartimaeus. Yeah, that's a lot longer than Jace. Yeah. Well, this man named Bartimaeus was blind. That means he couldn't see. That would, that, that would be hard if you couldn't see, wouldn't it? Well, he was alongside the road, and he heard a whole bunch of people coming down the road. And he heard people say Jesus' name. So he knew Jesus was in there. And so he started calling out to Jesus because he wanted to see if Jesus could heal him from being blind to help him see again. So he called out to Jesus. And you know what the people said? The people that were around him, they told him to be quiet. They told him, shh. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. And so they probably said that because they thought that Jesus was really, really, really important and didn't have time for Bartimaeus, who was not important. So they tried to make him be quiet. But you know what? He didn't listen. He didn't listen that time. He yelled out to Jesus again. And when he did it that time, he said, Jesus, have mercy on me. And so Jesus said to his disciples, and he said, call him. Have, have him come over here to me. And so they went over, and those people that were telling him to be quiet then, they didn't tell him to be quiet anymore. They said, come on, get on your feet. Jesus wants to see you, so come on over. Can you get on your feet? Come on, get on your feet. Go over to Jesus. Oh, oh not right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing that he didn't listen because Jesus wanted to know that Jesus, that Bartimaeus wanted help. He was praying to Jesus and Jesus wanted to know that. Now that doesn't mean that the next time somebody tells you to be quiet that you don't have to listen to them. <laughs> you have to listen to mama, right? You have to listen when mama tells you to be quiet. Are you teachers at preschool? Yeah. 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 And and sometimes you're loud at school. Yeah. At preschool, I know because you're a big boy now, huh? Yes. Yes. You're this many. You just turned that many not too long ago, didn't you? Yes. So now 
you know when people tell you to be quiet, you can kind of tell when's a good time you really have to be quiet or when you can say, but wait, I need to say this because it's important. He's good at that. He's good at that. <laughs> Every time, probably. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, our story reminds us that when we need help, Right? When you need help, Chase, it's okay to, to not be quiet. We, when you need help, they, we want you to ask for help, okay? Like sometimes if you're trying to build something at home and you can't do it by yourself, it's okay to ask for help, right? We don't build the castle. Why Did you build always? a castle? Or a maze? Oh. Railroad tracks? Oh, you build lots of stuff. Oh. And you get help building that? It's okay to ask for help. So how can we ask for help? How are some ways to ask for help? What do you say when you ask for help? How do you ask nicely? <coughs> can you help me please? That's a wonderful thing. Who can you ask for help? Daddy? Carson? Carson? Anybody else? Me. Mommy. Oh, there's probably one more person on that list. Who else? Audrey. Yes. And you can ask Jesus for help too. What? What? Yes, you <laughs> can. <laughs> I don't ask people for help, like anybody else. You don't ask anybody You can ask your teachers for help too at preschool. Right? Yes. And your friends. And you can pray and ask Jesus for help. If there's something maybe that mommy and daddy and Audrey and Carson can't help you with, you can pray and ask Jesus to help you with it. Okay? Okay, okay good. And when people try to tell you, be quiet when you're asking for help, you don't have to listen to that. Okay? Because Bartimaeus didn't listen, and Jesus was happy that Bartimaeus didn't listen. Okay? okay. Alright, let's pray. Close your hands. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus, Thank you for Jesus. Who, who helps us see, who helps us see. That, we're important to you. that we're important to you and that you want to help us. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you. So we okay. <laughs> Claver writes, 
Asking for help is a universally dreaded endeavor. Whether we're struggling with giving, getting that heavy bag in the overhead bin on the airplane or fixing a flat tire by the side of the road, we are much more likely to say, I'm good, rather than, can you help? If we fall and we can't get up, we'd rather crawl all the way out to the street to our car and, re and get in the car rather than inconvenience someone else and thus reveal our problem or our weakness. We usually say, I got this. Well, Claver believes there are many reasons why we would rather cling to that little branch over a gorge than to cry out for help. Here's some of the reasons that Claver suggests. Some of us were never taught how to ask for help. Many of us love our independence. I know that fits a lot of people in here. Others of us don't even think to ask. We're so focused on caring for ourselves that we don't even realize when we need help. Still others of us convince ourselves that it's easier just to do it alone. I know I've used that one before. And besides, who among us wants to be indebted to someone else? Because if they help you, then you feel like you have to help them with something. Not true, but that's the way we feel sometimes. A vast majority of us are just afraid to ask. We're afraid of what asking for help might say about us. In short, says Claver, we're very good at trying to do it ourselves, achieving modest results instead of getting real help and making real progress. And in doing so, we miss out on the gifts that someone else can give us. In today's scripture lesson, blind Bartimaeus has no problem asking for help. In today's lesson, we hear that Jesus was on his road, on his way, on the road to Jerusalem to die. In addition to his disciples, there was a large crowd of people that were following him. This road to Jerusalem led through the town of Jericho. That road between Jericho and Jerusalem was a busy one, and it was filled with a lot of people, and among those people were robbers and beggars. And this is where Jesus encounters this beggar, a blind man named Bartimaeus. The Gospels share the story of Bartimaeus in three of the books, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We don't know much about this man, but we do know that he was a beggar. And Matthew's account actually says that he was with another beggar and that they were both healed by Jesus. Unlike our world today, in ancient times, begging was considered an acceptable way to earn a living for people who couldn't work. If you had money yourself, it was considered your duty to give a beggar something as you walk past them. Well, while sitting on the side of this road, Bartimaeus heard a big commotion. A large crowd was coming down the road towards him, and he heard somebody say the name of Jesus. And he had heard about this man, this healer and this teacher from Nazareth. He knew about Jesus' compassion and his healing powers and his love for the outcast, and he believed that Jesus could help him. As he heard the crowd coming closer, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus was a believer, even though he had never met Jesus. He had faith that was so simple, so childlike. He trusted in his heart that Jesus could help him. Even though the crowds criticized him, he had faith and he prayed. He prayed a very simple and a very short prayer. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This simple man, begging on the side of the road, is the perfect picture of what faith 
in Jesus is all about. He can't see, but he believes. Faith comes by hearing, not by seeing. Hearing Bartimaeus' prayer, Jesus calls to his disciples, call him. Well, now the crowd changes their tune. Instead of ridiculing this blind man, they say, cheer up, get on your feet, Jesus is calling you. Bartimaeus then throws down his cloak, and he jumps to his feet, and he goes to Jesus, and Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus wants us, honestly and openly, to share our needs. He wants to hear what's going on in our mind and in our heart. Bartimaeus wanted his sight. He wanted Jesus to fix his eyes. And he believed that Jesus had the power to do that for him, and he did. And then Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. So what does that mean about the times when we pray for something specific and it doesn't come out exactly the way that we had hoped? Does that mean that we didn't have enough faith to be granted that prayer request? No. Sometimes God says no to what we ask because God wants to make room for something bigger and better. Sometimes God wants to teach us patience. Have you ever, ever experienced that with one of your prayer requests? You have to have patience. Sometimes God knows that what we're asking for is going to harm us in some way. We can't know the mind of God, so we pray. We pray and we trust. We trust that Jesus is going to hear our prayer and give us the very best for us at that time. Go. Your faith has healed you. Faith itself makes us well. One of the keys to asking and receiving help is thankfulness. A sense of gratitude helps us to see outside of ourselves. We see what Jesus has done for us. We see what others have done for us. And this thankfulness helps us to acknowledge our dependency on God and on each other. After Bartimaeus received his sight, what was the first thing that it said that he did? He got up and gave thanks, followed. Got up and he followed Jesus on the road, gave thanks. He was thankful for what Jesus had done for him. He showed his gratitude not only in words, but in actions. The actions of a follower. He can't repay what Jesus has done for him, but he gave his life in response. It feels good when somebody shows thankfulness after you've done something nice for them. And we know that it also feels good when we give thanks for things that others have done for us. That simple act of saying thank you makes it easier for us to ask and to give help. We live in a world that has fallen and can't get up on its own. We've fallen too. And there are times when we need help in order to stand again. When we accept help from others, we're actually giving them a gift. Let's not be afraid to ask, to have faith, to be thankful to God who furnish us, furnishes us with all of our needs and to be thankful for the people who are standing ready to help us on God's behalf. Amen.
Oh, sinner, come. 